My name's Tech Tone. I've been playing gotcha games for about three years, and one of my most anticipated characters of all time is coming out uh, within days. And uh, I'm very, very, very nervous, and I've saved all of my crystals for Kafka. I have about 14,000 crystals for Kafka when she comes out, and I don't have a guaranteed Kafka yet, but my friend Gotcha Smack, he released a video called The Kafka Discussion because words around the street is maybe Kafka isn't as good as us players are hoping for, but I, I lean towards Gotcha Smack for advice every day. And today, we're going to find out what the theory crafters think. Well, well, well. Kafka. The woman of your dreams. The one you've been waiting for. Less than a week away from her release date. And she's shaking uh, up to be one of the baddest bitches to ever grace anime inside a okay. video game. And, and, and you mean bad as in like she's hot, right? Not as bad as in like she's not good? She is fine. She I is? I mean that from high quality, satisfactory, and yep. a literal standpoint. She's yep. actually fine. Her yep. uh, booba physics will probably be peak. So probably no, nah, they were nerfed. Unfortunately, uh, those are leaks. Uh, they used to be much better, and then they they toned them down. Sitting at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro next to Master Chief, and even Master Chief himself will take his helmet off just to get a better look at her. Yeah, she's looking like she's going to be a solid pickup for all the waifu collectors out there. But on a more personal note. No, don't tell me she's bad, bro. Is this a compliment sandwich? This really sounds like a compliment sandwich. Like, oh man, she's really hot. Oh God, if I get told to pull her because you want her. Because waifu ever meta? Oh God, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cry. For those who do care about the analytical perspective, we are here today to oh, discuss God. our thoughts as we always do prior to a character's oh, release no. on their performance. What do I think about them? Where's my headspace at? Let's go ahead and get into no, it. I mean, no. if I'm being honest with you guys, she's looking like she's going to be just as expensive as I thought she would be. What do you mean by she looks expensive? What do you mean by that? And it's a different kind of expensive, right? It, there's a nuanced description to expensive in gacha games. There's okay. Ex expensive such as, oh, people make the argument, you need their light cone, you need their eidolons. There's that kind of expensive. But then there's the kind of expensive where you have to fill up their entire trace tree. You have to build up them to level 80 because they are a break effect character who scales better with leveling. And uh, that's the kind of expensive that Kafka is going to be. You have to take her all the way up to level 80 because break effect scaling with level is absolutely nuts. Is it? Wait, actually? Break effect scales to at 80? Wait, by how much? I didn't even know that. Okay, I mean, I was going to do that anyways. All right, I was going to I was gonna build an 80 anyways. But it doesn't stop there. Her whole entire concept is uh, predicated upon triggering or re-triggering, should I say, dots already inflicted upon the enemy. And because of this, you not only have to build her up, you have to build up the dot characters as well. Uh, I was going to build a Sampo anyways. I was going to build a Sampo. Which is fine because this is a long-term game. You're going to eventually end up doing that anyways. Right. The problem here is that it doesn't end there as well. So you have to build up your Luca. You have to build up your Sampo. You have I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to use Luca and Sampo. I'm going to use Sampo and Asta. I think I'm going to do Luocha, Asta, Sampo, Kafka. I think that's what I'm doing. You build up your Servo and then when a... I already have Servo. I'm not going to use Servo with my Kafka. A uh, Pyro character comes out or a... Uh, oh, dear God. <sighs> you did not hear that. If I had the Men in Black device, I would snap the camera to make you all forget it. You have to build up a Fire character. Uh, probably later on down the road, Fire... Are you telling me that Topaz is good with Kafka? Because I would like... To, I was going to build her anyway. No, there's a pyro dot coming. Who? I, I, I not heard of that shit at all. What the f is Guani Fen? What the hell is that? That chick? Oh, she's cute as f Oh, she cute as f Okay. Interesting. All right. This is good. Fire is, is, is not an element that's as potent as potent as a, a shock wind and bleed bleed those are really the best ones to re-trigger but they're so what you're telling me is if there's a bunch of new dot characters coming out and kafka makes dot characters better that means i should get her if i want to pull the other characters because they're not going to be as good without her is what i'm getting here that's what i'm hearing so that sounds to me like i should be pulling for kafka no matter what and especially if all the new characters are hot women right surely i'm not gonna have to pull for a dude they're all gonna be hot women right right surely essentially okay well this sounds like it's a it's no problem for me there probably will be a pi uh, a fire character coming down the road anyways um 
if you're somebody who's thinking, nah, I don't have to build up all those people. Yes, the f you do, buddy. Okay, yes, you do. Be but I don't wanna. <laughs> because if you don't, it's wasted potential for Kafka. Allow me to explain why. So if Kafka can re-trigger dots, the dots, the multiplier, the damage. But here's the thing, okay? Kafka's banner is incredible. And having characters where you can infinitely invest in them is great. Now, it's not that you have to 80 them. It's that you would want to. And with Kafka's banner, you're going to be picking up a lot of duplicates, right? Unless I get f***ed and they're all Serval, which surely they won't be. I'm going to want to 80 a f E4 Sampo. I'm going to want to 80 an E4 Luca regardless, right? They're cool characters. I would want to do that already. So it's fine. Which formula for a dot is the attack percent of the character, right. uh, the defense of the enemy, right. and the resistance to that element that the right. enemy has. Makes so, sense. So there's gonna be scenarios where you go inside of the memory of chaos where the enemy isn't weak to a particular element, but they will be weak to another element. For, for instance, let's say they're not weak to wind, but they're weak to physical. Well, you can throw in Luca inside of that team composition and Luca's gonna be the one who's carrying the team because Kafka's gonna be re-triggering the bleed dot on that enemy. And yep. since bleed dot scales off of the HP of the enemy, that's gonna be the biggest damage amplification for that team composition against that particular scenario. Yep. So there's gonna be scenarios where you're gonna have to swap out dot characters. Now, And, yeah and that's fine, because that's what you have to do for the right lane. I'll, I'll just never use Su Shang ever again, and I'll only use... Luca, it's that easy. Look, I, I, I see, I see absolutely zero problem. Yes, you can make. I see zero issues. You can run three dot characters. Absolutely, you can. But my point is, some dot characters are going to perform much worse than other dot characters up against the elemental synergies you're facing. So, because of this, you really need to have a dot character built for each corresponding element that matches the scenario you're going up against inside makes of the sense video to me game. and unfortunately dot is one of those damage concepts inside of this game that needs a lot of investment in order to deal any kind of damage even when re-triggered so not only is it a heavy investment in terms of building up their relic sets and getting the right sub stats it's also a heavy investment with resources for taking them to level 80 because once you dis once you have them but it's gonna be good right it's gonna be good because then when you get it it's gonna be like insane right built up now you have to establish on the kafka team compositions who's going to be the one in charge of breaking the shields but here's the important thing here's the important thing for other characters like zila it's like all right you have to get these rolls or they're terrible the majority of dot dealers damage first of all can come from a main stat on your gloves your lights your light cone and your levels to where it's like guaranteed damage that you can level up versus having to pray for rng to get the crit rate crit damage you can never get good rate could crit, crit, good crit rate and crit damage guaranteed but you can always good like get good attack person by just leveling up because the unfortunate truth about break effect is well if you're not breaking shields it's a completely useless stat true so you have to decide out of the team composition who is the one that's going to be breaking the shields because that's the one you're going to be putting the break effect set on true um so with that being said there's two ways to build these dot characters you build them with a break effect set and then you build them with a regular set because they're not uh focusing on breaking enemy shields this right. is now an even larger investment uh, because not only do you have to build up every character, you also have to have two uh, different sets. Now, I already know what you're thinking. Oh, I'm just going to put a set on them that has a little bit of break effect. You're going to go hybrid. A little bit of break effect, a little bit of attack, a little bit of effect hit rate here right. and there. Sure, you can do that. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, thank God, bro. I really hope he doesn't say something that's going to make me feel like an idiot. Because that is exactly what I was going to do, man. I'm like, shit, all right, I count my relics. Am I making a break? Am I making a dedicated break effector? Absolutely not. If they break, they break. If they don't break, they don't break. It is what it I am not doing all this try hard shit. Please don't say but. Absolutely. I have no problem with that. Just know that that break effect stat is absolutely useless. But if you want to play the brain dead way, which you shouldn't get offensive because. It's the brain dead way. <laughs> Brain dead means you don't want to use your brain and you just want to uh, enjoy Me the hit. game without thinking too hard about combat. There's nothing wrong with this. Me this hit. is not an insult. I'm just telling you the truth. You can do that as well. But if you're somebody who's really trying to yep. max out that play style, you definitely want to have a set that's going to match the break effect play style and then a set that's going to match their uh, maximize their ability to deal dot damage 
There's just there's just no way and I'm ever gonna get to the point with a with a casual phone game where I think, okay, now so here's the part where I use my dedicated breaker. Okay, so only shampoo can break, so I gotta pull DPS. No auto allowed. I'll be manual only. Uh, I will. Uh, this is the part where I will break him with my Luca. I'm not doing that, bro. Okay, I will. I will be killing them with auto and that's the truth uh with their regular trigger dot which by the way i would like to reiterate for the newbies there are two entirely different dots there's the regular dot and then there's the break effect dot so somebody like sampo is capable of applying a regular dot but then when you break the enemy shield with his wind element he applies the break effect wind dot which is an entirely different which i believe is called wind shear different multiplier and damage formula that is much higher than the regular dot so because of this, it is important to establish who's breaking shields on the team. Now, with all of that being said, yeah. this is why I say Kafka is very expensive, and she is. Now uh -huh. that we got that out the way, let's talk about the goods. He's also the most unique DPS in the game that I think is probably going to be the most enjoyable. Because yes, sir! Because she's hot. Have you heard her voice lines? Have you seen her ult? It looks incredible. Having, being able to make dot characters the main DPS without yep. them actually being the main DPS is yep. really cool. Yep. Just imagine your Luca against a scenario where everyone's weak to physical. Yep. He breaks the uh, the elite shield. Kafka pops her ult and her skill and turns his two break his bleed dots into 100k damage. That is the coolest shit possible, and it sounds incredibly exciting to play. That's right. That's so right. She can do that with not only Luca, she can also do it with the Sampo, and then she can do it with the Serval. You want to know why I want to pull for Kafka? It's because I know that it will give me gameplay that nobody else can provide because I am going to be dumping all of my resources into her, and I'm going to be showing people why dot streams are the truth. Okay, it is gonna be lit. And just remember, for all these posers who are gonna roll for Kafka, they're doing it because they watch my stuff. Okay, I've been saying I was gonna be rolling for this chick since day mother one, and nothing has changed. I am the original Kafka wanna. I put her ass on the map. It's the goddamn truth. I don't care what you say. If you're rolling for Kafka, it's cause of me. It's the truth. So it's it's one of those styles where it's like, yeah, it's a lot of investment, but over time, as more dot characters start to come into the game. You are essentially using a play style. Oh, also, if I don't get Kafka, I will be quitting. That is um, recycling its enjoyability, if that makes sense, because you're always going to make that new person the DPS because Kafka can re-amplify their dots. Yep. So it's a very enjoyable play style to utilize. She's actually the most fun DPS in that aspect. Yep. She's not the only DPS. She's the DPS along with whomever you're using with her dot. That's uh, right. Play style concept. Anyways. I would like to solidify my stance on um, how I'm going to be going about it with her. Say it. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to do the three dot characters on one team unless I'm doing simulated universe. Do it. Where I'm at is I'm going to do a Kafka and then look at the scenario that I'm going up against. If they're weak against win, I'm going to throw Sampo in there and yep. it's just going to be uh, Sampo and Kafka. And then yep. that third character is going to be somebody like Pella or Silver Wolf. Yeah. Um, to amplify the damage of Sampo's dot and Kafka's dot. And then the final character, of course, is going to be a healer unit. Um, she's gonna- Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do like Luocha, and then a Pela, or Luocha, then an Asta, and then a a Luca or a Sampo. You have some skill point issues. So you're gonna make sure, you, you need to make sure you have a skill point, you know, efficient team composition. You can't just have everybody on there. Yeah, because uh, Kafka needs to skill every time. Right. So I'm more of the, you know, I'm, I'm more advocating two dot characters as opposed to three. Now, Same. I'm not saying you can't do three. Do it. I, I don't think three is a good idea. I, I think I think two supports and two daughters is way better. I'm sure it'll work. Just like regular team comes. Just fine. For me personally, though, I'd rather amplify the damage of them by throwing somebody on the team like Silver Wolf and Pella who can bring the defense of the enemy so far down that Kafka and um, that associated dot character who is her dance partner can make up for that third character's dot damage. Yep. However... I do think three dot characters will have viability as well. I just think it's going to be better with that scenario. Sam, I think it works, but I think the play style where it's like two dot characters and two characters is going to be way better. Mario, I just pitched at you. I also think that Pella and Silver Wolf aren't the only options. I think Asta will be a fantastic... Yes, you do. You know you do. You know you think without Silver Wolf, every character is just useless. Okay, don't...
Help me here. I know you're just saying this to make me feel better, man. Okay, but the reality is I don't need that short little dumb character. Okay, and shame on anybody who uses her. Never gonna roll for it. I don't care. Fantastic option in scenarios where everyone's weak against the fire element because Asta uh, amplifies everyone's attack percent, which increases their regular dot damage, which is an overall net positive for all dot characters, period. So she's another supportive op option. Um, I'm not a big fan of Yukong just because... Because she's not good, guys. Let's just say it, okay? Let's just put it out in the open, okay? And you don't need crit, da crit rate, crit damage for a dot team. I'm sorry, guys. Yukong's just not that good. He's imaginary, but she can increase everyone's attack percent as well as, as, uh, as well as their crit rate and crit damage. She might be an option, but for now... No. Don't. Don't. No, just you use you use Yukong for the sprint around the real world. You don't use it for anything else, guys. I'm sorry. Now, when Inhibitor Lune comes out, yes, Yukong will be great. But until then, guys, nobody uses her. Okay, unless you're using DPS Lurocha, DPS Luocha. Okay, that is the only time that you're ever going to use her. I'm sorry, guys. Now she's in the back with Amber for me. But my biggest yep. concern with Kafka is honestly just the fact that um, I got to build up so many damn characters. I got to build her up. I got to build up Luca. I and what the hell is your ass doing? What else you want to do? Farm relics? Yeah, right. Okay, I'd rather have mid relics that perform when my characters get to level 80 than any of this other dumb shit, smack. Smackaroni. Okay. What what else are you gonna do? Oh, I gotta build characters. Way, way, way. I know he's not saying that. Please don't please don't make me apologize again. I'm sorry. It was just a joke. <laughs> It's just a joke. I'm just saying with my time, I'm okay with that. Knowing that there's a safer route for me to go to where eventually when I grind these characters, I'll have a team that performs versus, oh boy, oh boy, I really hope I get a good relic today. It's, it's going to make me lose my mind. So having dot characters where they're just going to be consistent, then we're, we're chilling. I haven't touched my servo. I got to build her up. My Sampo's level 50. Like, God damn, there's so many freaking characters I got to build up that it's just going to be a hell of a grind fest when she releases. It's okay. That's this right. This is what I look forward to. This is part of hey, the enjoyment. You you think it's gonna be a grind fest? You you think you're gonna have to grind when she comes out? Oh, smack, 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 smack. I have a little story to take you on about a mentally ill streamer who streams at twitch.tv forward slash tactone every single day, super early. Super early, right guys? right and what he does is something that no other man has possibly done imagine this concept he grinded before the character came out boys 60 purples 131 blues 59 greens 4.6 million credits 338 purples 885 blues 365 greens 160 Points for their light cone. Light cones already prepared. Level 60, good night, sleep well. Level 50, resolution shines of pearls of sweat. Level 40, fermata. Imagine that. And like a, like a, like a, like a bird in heat. Like a bird in heat. He still thrives. And he will bring his good night, sleep well to new levels incomprehensible to mere humans. Level 70, and this will be 80 already for my Kafka when she descends home, and she will, okay? Because I will be the greatest Kafka haver of all mother time. Her best light cone already 80 Bop, let's go, baby. Good night, sleep well, already stacked. It's time, boys. Imagine that. God's back, you don't gotta worry, man. Because us free to play, we prepared before she even came out. Imagine that. Enjoyable experience for me. I do think it's worth mentioning that if you have your- My ass isn't even guaranteed, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I will win. No matter what obstacle Hoyoverse puts in my way, I will win. I will pull Kafka, she will be the greatest, and we will prosper. We will win. We will not lose the 50-50 because I am better. I am better. I am faster. I am stronger. Your DPS is she is not a must pull in any way, shape, or form. She's just. Well, she's got to be. What do you mean? She's, uh, yes, she is. She's really good. What do you mean? She's going to be amazing. Just one of those units that is going to be purely carried by the fandom. Um, if you want her, you're going to grab her. And if you, you're looking for an interesting play style, I think those are definitely the selling points and incentive, incentivizing people to grab her. Other than that, she's, she's an easy skip if you're not like 
raving about how bad she is how fine she is as a character if you're not caring about like you know things like that uh she's an easy skip for sure hmm no 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 there's no way no 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 she's not she'd be a hard skip it would not be easy no 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 nope because if you don't pull her then poor little sampo luca what are they gonna do every dot character needs her i mean if you want to no there's no way there's no way no she's gonna be incredible she's not gonna be an easy skip guys people are gonna lose sleep over this character guys she is not an easy skip mm. yeah as of now that is my summary of kafka uh obviously when she releases we'll be doing the showcases we'll make the guy we'll do all the good stuff like that um, but for now, that is going to be my thoughts on Kafka. As always, hopefully I brought you guys some value and some pretty useful insight that you can use to uh, bang that shit out with Kafka. I will be banging that shit out with Kafka. Guys, this is Gotcha Smack, best theory crafter in the entire community. He originated the HP% percent build on Blade. Theory crafters lost their mind everywhere, and he was right. Go follow him. Go give him a subscribe. That being said, Kafka will not be an easy skip, okay? And if you think that, that is because you're a jackass. Sampo is only in B tier because people don't understand him. The moment, the moment, the moment I get Kafka, I am going to show the world the mother truth. And if they put Kafka in this A tier, I am going to strangle them. She is going to be very niche. She is going to be very specific but she is gonna be very good and i'm gonna get her and she's gonna be good okay and i'm gonna get sampo's eidolons and it's gonna be insane she's gotta be good right am i coping there's no way i'm coping right am i coping there's no way i'm coping like she's gotta be good is it, it, it wait, are you guys not gonna pull for her i feel like she's gotta be good bro there's no there's still time to pull for blade y'all no, I already got Zila. I can get a Kafka. You know what's crazy though? Kafka gets better over time. And I'm with this game for the long haul. It's the truth. It's the truth. Everybody thought my ass was going to quit Honkai Star Rail. Everybody said, he just quits every game he plays, bitch. No, I don't if the game's good. Shut your mother f mouth, you fat f I play the games if they're good. Imagine that. Imagine that. And Kafka going to be a damn good unit. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. And it's the goddamn gospel truth.